Axe heard the king and the princess close and bolt the door behind him. Axe stood alone on a stone path that must have been about four feet wide. There was no ground on either side of the path, just empty blackness. He wondered how deep these chasms were, so he kicked a small stone over the edge. He gave up waiting for the sound of the pebble landing after several minutes and instead turned to see where the path led. The light was bad and he couldn't actually see more than 20 feet in front of him. But he noticed a large wall on the left side, some 15 feet away from the path. He also noticed something very curious about the wall. It seemed to glow and Axe had the unnerving feeling that it was watching him. The barbarian knew that that was a ridiculous idea and put it down to his own nerves. Until he actually saw a pair of eyes in the wall staring back at him, that is. The eyes didn't belong to the wall, though. They were set in a large statue of a figure dressed for battle. The figure wasn't a hanger or a longmoan or any of the monsters Death Adder usually had in his army. It looked too old, and Axe wondered why there were several of the things built into the wall. Perhaps they were the remains of previous adventurers who once trod this very path? That fort spooked the warrior badly, so he decided it was probably better to just concentrate on the task at hand, rather than worry about things he could only guess at. With a sigh, Axe moved on. He hadn't got very far when he thought his quest had come to an abrupt end. The path was broken. There was a huge section missing it, but he could see it continue into the darkness on the other side of the gap. Axe was just trying to decide how he was going to get across when he heard noises behind him and turned to see a hanger and a long moan. Axe didn't stop to wonder where they'd come from but advanced towards him. He'd only got one ace up his sleeve, and he was banking on it working. The hanger and long moan stopped when Axe came clearly into view, and they paused before both attacking at once. Axe ducked, an attacking hanger, and sliced at the long moan. Skullcrusher found its mark in the soldier's belly. The barbarian then quickly sheathed Skullcrusher and grabbed hold of the long moan lifted him up into the air, and helped him over the side of the path. Axe didn't hear him hit the ground either, even though the air was so still the slightest sound would have carried for miles. The hanger proved to be little trouble as well. Eventually, his screams died away too as he plummeted into the darkness. Axe took a couple of minutes to recover himself, and then once more walked to where the path seemed to just stop. He decided the only way he would get across the gap was by jumping. He backed up as far as he thought he needed to go, checked Skullcrusher was safe, took a deep breath, and started to run. The gap came at Axe much faster than he expected, and he almost missed his timing and tried to push himself off for the jump in mid-air. Axe sailed across the gap and cleared it by a good five feet. He landed on the other side, straight into the arms of a waiting skeleton. The skeleton seemed more surprised than Axe, so the warrior wasted no time in drawing Skullcrusher and letting loose. The skeleton was cautious and aware of the narrowness of the path, however, and although Axe knocked it down, there was still no way he could grab hold of the monster and throw it off. Axe was forced to do what he thought was best fighting like a maniac and ignoring any pain. Soon the skeleton lay as dust, and Axe looked in wonder at the ashes. Because there was no breeze here to scatter them, they lay exactly where the skeleton had fallen. Axe moved on, and soon noticed something else that caused him to be surprised. The wall on the left seemed to be closer. There were still statues in it, but either they were bigger than the ones he'd seen earlier, or they were closer to him. Axe wished he hadn't noticed while he continued along the narrow path. The light seemed to have changed too, not dramatically, but enough to make the statues look different, more alive. 
The path turned abruptly left for ten feet or so before continuing on in the usual direction. That made Axe wonder too. Why should the path change course? He stopped worrying and almost smiled when he saw four thieves up ahead. Even here, thought Axe, as he relieved them of six potions before allowing them to scamper on. Axe continued walking and then stopped. He heard the strange sound of wind. Strange because the place had been so deftly quiet up until then. He looked around but saw nothing. He looked forwards again and still saw nothing. The sound grew louder. And then Axe saw it up ahead. Two figures began to take shape in front of him. They seemed to be appearing out of the shadows as if someone could take a lump of darkness and mould it into a shape. The figures became more distinct and it wasn't long before Axe was faced by a Hanginger and a Stortiana, both grey and dead like the ones he'd fought on the Fiend's path. Axe prepared himself and then remembered how he defeated those monsters before. He moved cautiously back along the path to where he had turned left. The blind soldier sensed his movement and followed slowly. Axe then speeded up, and when he had passed across the turning, he stopped. Then he shouted at the top of his lungs. The figures snapped their heads to the direction of the sound and speeded up. Both of them simultaneously walked off the edge of the path, and Axe smiled as they plummeted into the bottomless blackness below. Axe felt like he'd been walking for miles. He'd been on the path a long time, so surely the structure this path went through would be visible outside the castle. Why then had he not heard of it? Strange things were afoot, and Axe had a nagging feeling they were going to get stranger before his mission was complete. The path widened gradually, and although Axe had grown accustomed to the light, he could still see no more than thirty feet in front of him. It was almost as if there was some external force denying anyone on the path more visibility than was permitted. His journey since the first incident with the Grey Henning and Storchiana had been largely uneventful. He'd met several more of the same figures, always manifesting themselves out of blackness and always blind. Each and every one had been dealt with in the same way. The path was much more convoluted now, and it seemed to twist and turn this way and that way, almost as if whoever built it was trying to use as many stone slabs as possible to create a path that failed to go forward. Of course, this gave Axe ample opportunity to move to a suitable position and call the soldiers to their death. Although things had been hairy for a while after four of the figures had suddenly materialised around him at once. Axe continued to notice how the wall seemed to be getting closer. He was at a point now where he could almost touch the statues as he passed them. Of course, he thought it was wise not to tempt fate and so left them well alone. A little further on, and Axe's suspicions became reality. The wall and the path met. The wall was one of three walls that joined up to create a large chamber. The fourth wall was missing, because this was where the path connected to the room. Axe stepped off the path and into the chamber, which he noticed had a different kind of stone flooring. Large bronze statues, each on an inscribed pedestal, lined the wall that had accompanied Axe on his journey. But now they weren't built into the wall, but instead stood proud and open. Axe tried to decipher the text on the pedestals, but soon gave up because it was written in a tongue that he did not recognise. The statues were not all unfamiliar, however. Axe recognised a hanger, a longmoan and a bazarian. He also saw some strange foul creatures that resembled the monsters his father and grandfather had called orcs. There were many legends among the barbarian folk that spoke of how their race had fought armies of these orc creatures when they had invaded Uria centuries ago. Axe decided that if they were indeed orcs, he was very glad to have only had to fight death at her. Taking on one of these monsters did not seem like a very healthy thing to do. Axe walked around the room and saw a large door on the far side. He crossed the room to go through it, but stopped when he heard a groaning sound, like someone forcing open an iron gate 
whose hinges had long since rusted up. Axe turned towards the sound and was astounded to see two of the statues climbing off their pedestals and start moving towards him. Axe's first reaction was one of gratitude because one statue was a hanger and the other a long moan. Not one of those fearsome looking orc things. Their joints creaked and squeaked in protest as they advanced, and Axe clearly noticed that they found moving an incredibly difficult task. This gave him an excellent idea. He quickly rushed across the room towards the path he'd just travelled along. He easily avoided the statues who followed him as best they could. Unfortunately, these nasties seemed to be able to see the barbarian. This narrowed his options down a bit and meant he couldn't trick them into walking into thin air like he'd done with the other monsters on the pathway. Axe stood at the edge of the room, as close to the abyss as he dared, and waited for the statues to catch up with him. The hanging had closed in first, and Axe sliced with Skull Crusher. The sound of his blade on bronze was loud, and the shockwave shook the wielder, but made no impression on the solid statue. Axe then put Plan P into action. He avoided the hangar's swing and leapt into the air, turning sharply as he landed. Now he was behind the hangar, who, at the same time, had only managed to half turn around. Axe shoved with all his might, one eye on the steel advancing long moan, and the hangar began to topple. It fell with a mighty crash that didn't seem to hurt it at all, but Axe kept pushing and the thing began to slide across the floor. Axe didn't stop pushing until he felt gravity take most of the weight and the hanger slipped over the edge into the chasm. Axe turned swiftly around to face the long moan. He wasn't sure that the trick was going to work again, so he waved for the long moan to make the first move. The creaking sound was tremendous as the long moan swung its club at Axe's head. Axe ducked and narrowly avoided a blow that might well have ended his quest there and then. He moved swiftly and raced around behind the long moan and kept running towards the other side of the room. Then he turned and started running back. Axe greared his teeth and braced himself for the impact as he slammed his shoulder into the long moan. The blow knocked the huge statue over the precipice. Unfortunately, Axe followed through on the strike with too much energy and he stared in wide-eyed terror as he realised he too was not going to stop before he reached the edge. Axe screamed, and with an extraordinary effort, he swung Crowl Crusher backwards over his head with both hands and all his might. The blade bit and held. Axe was dangling over the edge, supported only by Skull Crusher, which had bitten halfway through the edge of the floor. The barbarian didn't dare breathe as he tried to figure out what to do next. <laughs>